authors, imagine a world where self-publishing doesn't have to send you to an early grave from sheer overwhelm. Today, we're unveiling the ultimate strategy guide. By the time we're done, not only will you be equipped to tackle the treacherous trains of the self-publishing world, but you'll also have a foolproof plan to ensure your mental well-being stays intact. Follow these steps and you won't just survive, you'll thrive. Are you ready? Let's dive deep. Starting off with the sales report, syndrome. Let's picture a scenario. You've just unleashed your book into the wild and every few minutes, like clockwork, you're tempted to hit refresh on that sales report page. We've all been there, right? It's akin to constantly checking your reflection in every window you pass, momentarily satisfying, but ultimately not your best use of energy. Now, if I were to peek at every single sales report for every author I coach on a daily basis, well, let's just say I would have earned myself a VIP suite at the nearest insane asylum. Why? because it's just not healthy for the mind. The book market, like any other market, has its ebbs and flows. Peaks where sales rocket to the sky and things where it just seems quieter than a library on a Sunday. If you get swept up in every little change, it's going to be a wild and ultimately exhausting ride. But more importantly, it's just not productive. Adjusting your advertising strategy or noticing patterns around specific times, days, or even months is all part of the game. These fluctuations are totally normal. So rather than chaining yourself to the relentless refresh cycle, take a step back. Allocate specific times, perhaps once or twice a week, to do a deep dive into your sales data. By doing so, you're giving yourself the gift of perspective. You'll begin to spot trends, understand patterns, and make more informed decisions. Remember, the journey to successful self-publishing isn't about obsessing over each micro moment, but understanding and appreciating the broad broader narrative. So let's keep our sanity intact and focus on the bigger picture. All right, let's dive into something that I'm sure many of you felt, that sinking feeling of information overload. Seriously, does it seem like every time you hop on the social media, there's a new expert shouting the next big thing in book marketing? But let's be real, half of it feels like they're just shooting from the hip, right? Here's a little inside scoop from our end. In my team, we're not about guessing games. Every week we sit down and dissect hard data, sifting through what's genuinely moving the needle in book sales and what's, well, just fluff. This isn't about feelings, it's about facts. So why do I tell you this? Because when we share tips on this channel or when we dive deep into our coaching program, know that it's backed by real data, not just the flavor of the month. It's proven strategies, not speculation. And the best part, we're here to share that gold with you. So if you're tired of wading through the sea of endless and often conflicting information, I've got a lifeboat for you. Grab our free pre-publishing and marketing checklist that is linked down below in the description. I'm telling you, it's a game changer. And if you're really looking to stay Step it up. Our coaching program is where we roll up our sleeves and get down to the nitty gritty and we cut through the noise together. Okay, next let's chat about something I see so often. It's almost like a rite of passage for authors. The never ending quest for perfection. We've all been there, endlessly tweaking sentences, second guessing our plots and wondering if maybe just maybe we should rewrite that chapter for the 10th time. Look, aiming for excellence. I totally get it. But at some point you have to realize there's a big difference between making genuine improvements and just stalling out of fear. Set yourself a firm deadline and commit to it. Because while you're agonizing over that one adjective, someone else is publishing their fifth book. And here's a little secret. If your book doesn't quite hit the mark the first time around, guess what? You can always republish or adjust it based on the feedback. But that feedback loop can't start until you release your work into the wild. The next one is social media. It's like a modern day party everyone's attending. And if you're an author, you just might feel the pressure to dance on every floor. Let's talk a little bit of strategy. I get asked a lot about which platforms are best for authors. And while the landscape keeps changing, there are a few platforms that consistently offer solid ground. Facebook and Instagram are the two biggies that I personally recommend. They've got large, diverse audiences and fantastic tools for authors to connect with their readers. Now, TikTok is a new kid on the block. It's fresh, it's vibrant, and if you're into that short form dynamic content style, it can be a gold mine. But remember, it's not for everyone. The key is to understand its vibe and see if it lines with your personal brand and your book's essence. But no matter where you choose to set up shop, remember this, it's not about being everywhere, but being effective where you are. Dive deep, engage authentically and make sure you're having fun. After all, if you're not enjoying the process, it's going to come through in your content. So pick your party, find your groove and 
get dancing. The next one is reviews. The double-edged sword of the writing world. On one side, they can be a glorious affirmation that someone somewhere connected with your work. On the other, they can be a quick jab to your ego, especially if it's a bad one. Now, here's a little bit of a reality check. Every author, I mean, every author will receive a bad review or maybe a few or maybe a lot. It's a given. Does it sting? Absolutely. But should it derail your passion? Not in the slightest. Remember, literature is subjective. What's a literary masterpiece to one can be a snooze fest to another. For a bit of perspective, do this little exercise. Think of your favorite author, someone whose work you absolutely adore. Now go look up their one-star reviews. Dive into the depths of those scathing comments and realize that even literary giants face criticism. Some of it valid and, well, some of it, let's just say, it might have been written on someone who had a hair, bad hair day. So what's the plan when a bad review hits you hard? Allow yourself a moment. It's okay to feel a little bit deflated. Focus on the constructive bits, if there are any. There might be genuine feedback wrapped up in there. And finally, move on. Keep writing, keep improving, and remember that for every critic, there are readers who cherish what you bring to the table. Reviews are part of the author's journey. Wear each one good or bad as a badge of honor. They mean you've reached people made them feel something, and that's what writing is all about. All right, let's talk time management. Specifically, balance out your time between marketing and writing. Because let's be honest, navigating between writing your bestseller and promoting your current one can feel a bit like trying to juggle fire while, say, riding a unicycle on a tightrope. Dramatic? Maybe. Relatable? Absolutely. Here's the thing. Balance is key and finding that equilibrium between creation and promotion is crucial. Why? Because both are equally important. While it might be tempting to keep pushing for more sales or more engagement, remember no promotion is going to help you if you don't have new content to share. Your readers are hungry for your next story, so make sure you're feeding that appetite. Now I get it, this is easier said than done, which is why my coaching program, The Author Success System, we emphasize this balance. We provide you with strategies not just to market effectively, but also to ensure you're loving the writing process. It's all about striking that perfect balance between sharing your work into the world and creating the next masterpiece. Remember, at the end of the day, it's your passion for writing that started this journey. Don't let the clamor of marketing drown it out. So to wrap things up, self-publishing is a thrilling journey with its highs and lows. It's a blend of creativity, business acumen, patience, and resilience. With these tips in your arsenal, I'm confident you'll find this path with more confidence and a little bit more sanity. If you've been on this journey and have your own tips or experiences to share, let's create a treasure trove of advice right here in the comments. And if you found value in today's video, a thumbs up would be super appreciated. Don't forget to subscribe for more insights and deep dives into the world of self-publishing.